Mountain Blade Warband is a game developed by Tail Worlds and published by Paradox Interactive. It was released earlier this year and is a sequel to the original Mountain Blade from 2008. Warband is an action RPG with more than a helping of medieval simulation. The game has you create its character in typical RPG fashion, with probably more customization and skill options than Bioware's recent offerings. There are no classes in Warband, and there is no magic. Your character sheet has a standard fare of attributes and a section for weapon proficiencies, which skill up as you do combat and as you level. What this game has beyond all the other action RPGs you may have played is a great amount of utility skills to choose from and level. Some of the skills are transforming death wounds into regular wounds, getting discounts on trade items, and being able to track other armies more effectively. You can choose to branch out in your skills, or focus on the ones that you really want to level for maximum effect. Do not worry that you don't have certain utility skills though. You can always hire party members throughout the world who will complement your skills with their own expertise. Right after creating your character and working through the first introductory quests, you will find that you have a great amount of freedom in this game. This is as far from on rails as you can get, and probably the closest medieval simulation on the market. The overworld is huge, and there are many different towns, cities, and castles to visit. You raise your renown in the strife-stricken land of Calradia, which directly increases the amount of troops you can hire. At first, you will only be able to recruit meager peasants from villages, but as time goes on, you will gain the funds necessary to hire expensive swordsmen and cavalry throughout the taverns you come across. Your army's individual troops will level as they gain experience from your quests or battles. If they survive long enough, you can upgrade them into more formidable troops often with multiple choices presented to you on what they can upgrade to. The mere peasant can later become a seasoned archer or horseman to ride alongside you. You will probably spend most of your game time outside going through day and night cycles traveling from place to place. This freedom is very daunting at first and I found myself sticking to a few familiar areas until I was comfortable enough to explore the land. The vast amount of destinations is great on paper, but you will soon discover that some of these places are direct layout copies of each other. Some people may not like that you aren't able to just go anywhere you please in a city like you can in Assassin's Creed. Instead, these destinations have menus for the places you want to do business in, and small areas you can explore to talk to NPCs. One of the touted features of the Mountain Blade series is its combat system. Unlike most action RPGs, you don't select an ability to use or just spam your quick attack buttons to great effect. You will find that even on the easiest difficulties, death is more than happy to follow your mistakes. The game has you attacking in four directions for melee and mounted combat. Parrying an attack only works if you choose the correct direction to parry. Blocking with a shield is more forgiving, but those tend to break eventually. In order to attack in a specified direction, you must move your mouse in that direction, then attack. Your character will pull back its arm to swing, then let go. If it confuses you, there's an extensive tutorial section you can play around to hone your abilities. Range combat is more difficult and complicated than most games. As you pull back on your bowstring or ready your arm to launch a spear, your aiming reticule gets smaller to denote that your aim is improving on your shot. If you hold the attack too long, however, it gets bigger again. Also, you have to compensate for range. This isn't an FPS. If you want to shoot far, you have to shoot up. Another thing unique to this game's combat is the fact that your character's momentum affects their damage dealt. That means that if you're running at an enemy or riding past them on your horse, you will do severely more damage than if you backpedal away while swinging madly. As far as I can tell, you can also manually swing your mouse as you attack to create even more momentum to turn that scratch damage into a possible killing blow. The AI in this game is swarmy in that they tend to cluster around enemies to kill them. Pairing multiple foes is difficult, so if someone gets surrounded on all sides, they are pretty much goners. This is a challenging game for the first couple hours, and even after that, it's hard to raise the game's difficulty without dying. The game's music and art style felt a bit humdrum, and nothing struck me as noteworthy. This is more of a type of game where I would mute it while listening to music or podcasts. People's main gripes with this game lie in its graphical quality. It's nothing to write home about. For a game released in 2010, you will probably think that it was from the Half-Life era, or even before that. 
Even after setting everything I could find to maximum, I was simply craving more in the graphics department. Does it hurt this game? Not really. You can tell they just put more work into the other areas of the game. The quest system gives you lots of time in order to finish your quests, and holds more quests than you will ever be able to keep track of. One problem I had to get used to is the fact that if you take your quests from leaders or nobles, they tend to move around a lot, and you have to talk to a lady from a castle of their region in order to find out where they are currently located. Once you reach where the lady says they were, you will find that they have moved on and you have to talk to another lady in another castle to find them again. This eats up lots of time and makes me more inclined to just fight roaming bandits. The game has a multiplayer component which felt like it had its own learning curve. Enemy players are really good at this game. There are lots of servers open and with lots of players in them, so you won't have trouble finding a deathmatch, capture the flag, or a siege game. The multiplayer replay value is high if you find that you love the combat mechanics, but you won't be able to import your sing single player character into the fray. You choose from infantry, archer, and cavalry roles and are then given some currency to spend on equipment of your choice before you spawn. Although it may not be a beauty, Warband is very fun. There is simply a lot you can do in this game that I, ha that I haven't even touched on or been able to experience yet. This game has kept my atten attention for longer than I had anticipated, and I will probably be revisiting this about as often as I would revisit any casual MMO I was playing. If you loved playing with toy swords and pretending to command massive armies into battle on horseback, Warband makes that transition into the video game world very nicely.